This one NVIDIA setting could completely destroy your FPS in Battlefield 6. So therefore watch closely and let me explain exactly how to set this up. I'm also gonna give you my whole entire settings in the NVIDIA Profile Inspector as a config file so that you can straight up apply it to your PC. I'm also gonna talk about the best Battlefield 6 in-game settings for maximum FPS as well as other methods to boost your FPS even more. Since properly optimizing your Windows PC is gonna give you so much more FPS. But you know what's just as important? Also having super low ping. And and this is where GIAP Booster comes in clutch. GIAP Booster is your number one client helping you to find the best DNS service in your near for the least amount of pain. You can try it out with the link in the video description for absolutely free. And what it does basically is reduce your pain to the absolute minimum which your PC can provide. It's gonna connect you with the best DNS service in the near and also have a packet loss protection service. Just simply let it run in the background and now launch the game. It also doesn't only support Battlefield but also all the other games which are popular right now. So check it out for absolutely free with the link in the video description. And now guys let's take a look at the in-game graphics settings. Of course, performance preset on custom as well as quality on custom. Camera settings are kind of personal preference, but I would definitely recommend you to put your field of view up to the maximum. Next up here, we also have world motion blur. And for me personally, I don't like motion blur at all. The same as well with camera shaking. I would also turn off the film grain and also reduce the amount of camera bobbing. That way your picture is just gonna be a lot more stable and motion blur just looks weird. But now for the actual graphics quality settings, open this up here. Now these are, in my opinion, the best competitive settings which you should apply, guys, with texture quality being on low, the same as well with filtering on low. I would rather have a lot higher FPS. You can see as well the texture filtering has a medium GPU impact. Now the mesh quality. Now for the mesh quality, this is basically showing you how much trees and small rocks and everything are getting rendered in the distance, which are not player related. So you could personally also leave it on medium. For the immersion, you could also put it a little bit higher, but for me personally, I keep it on medium. Terrain quality, this one is kind of important to me at least. The game doesn't have to look completely horrible, so therefore I keep it on medium, on my GPU, even on high. If you can, keep it on high, guys. This is one of the most important factors how the game feels and looks like. I mean, visuals are also still kind of important to me, so therefore, yeah, definitely keep it on high. Other than that, for a sweet spot of performance, keep it on medium. Now, undergrowth quality, don't really care about it. Small rocks, vegetation, all that, completely low. Effects quality as well on low. Elementary quality, lightning, and all of these here as well on low. Now, local light and shadow quality. This has one of the highest CPU and GPU impacts out there. Of course, having the quality of the shadows a little bit higher is gonna give you a small competitive advantage. You can probably easier spot enemies around corners and stuff like that. But also, the impact is insanely high. So, for the sake of performance, first of all, try it low. The same as well with sun shadow quality. Now, shadow filtering itself. Here, I would recommend you to actually use PCF because that one is actually a little bit softer and I like softer shadows if that makes sense. Um, the other option kind of gives you more realistic ones but I would take PCF definitely. Reflection quality, don't care about it low. Screen space reflections, completely useless off. Post processing quality. You might think this one here is actually important for terrain and stuff like that but it's actually only visual aspects like depth of field, bloom and motion blur. So therefore low. Screen space, AO and GI. These are only basically as well calculations of light completely turned off. Now high fidelity object amount. This one basically impacts how nice and fancy the animation and sounds are of infantry and vehicles. For me personally, for the immersion, I can keep it on my PC on high. If you struggle with CPU a lot, just put it completely on low. The difference is not that huge that you should sacrifice a ton of FPS for having nice animations. But that's basically it. We're gonna go back. It's gonna tell you a reload is required whenever you go into the next game. World brightness on 60. What's kind of interesting is sharpness applies basically a mixture of anti-aliasing and upscaling. Just kind of interesting because you can enable both of them as well in here. And my fixed resolution scale is 100%, 1080p. Frame rate limiter off. Dynamic resolution scale completely turned off. And now the NVIDIA reflex low latency mode. For me personally, I keep it on enable plus boost since I try to get the least amount of input delay. Anti-aliasing is on TAA which is only temporal anti-aliasing. It's like the lowest quality one. For me personally, I actually like to play at least with DLAA because I really like how basically edges and objects in the distance look a little bit sharper. Now you could also use an upscaling technique, but for me personally, most GPUs out there don't handle this super well, especially if you're not running like the latest, I don't know, 40 or 50 series. NVIDIA frame generation, definitely don't use that one here um, because it gives you a ton of more input delay because you are using AI frames to sort of like create additional frames which you don't even have. 
and then the performance overlay just to check your FPS, you could theoretically turn on. Of course, always make sure that you also play on full screen, guys. That one is super important for the least amount of delay. And set your monitor hertz to the highest one, which is available. For me, it's 240 right now here. Vertical sync should also be turned off. And then you're already good to go. Now, the most important part are your NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings. This will determine how much FPS you actually get in Battlefield. And trust me, this is by far the most important step. That's why it's straight up in the beginning of the guide. And there are so many people who actually tell you completely wrong settings, which you have to understand for Battlefield. Other than that, you're gonna get actually worse performance. For the sake of the video, I already prepared a full-on profile, which you can straight up import with one simple click. Just like that, everything is applied. But of course, I also have to explain other stuff, especially the ultra low latency mode, which a lot of people don't seem to understand. And as the completely first step, guys, I'm gonna upload this profile actually into my discord.gg slash stripes. The link to it is in the video description. From there on, you can get the file. It's gonna be in the performance packs channel. Just simply type performance until you can see it. And then I'm gonna upload it in here straight up after this video. By the way, if you try to download anything from Discord, this one here always comes up because Discord doesn't actually scan the files, but you can always check this and there's obviously nothing in there. You can see it here. Once you get the profile on your desktop, we now need the actual NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Link to it is gonna be in the video description or just simply Google up the NVIDIA Profile Inspector and click under the first GitHub link. Then here you can see the latest version, which is 2.4029 click onto it, then just scroll down, and then you can see the Profile Inspector zip file. And then just simply drag the X onto your desktop. Once the program is launched, it should look exactly like this here. We're gonna apply this now to the Global Driver Profile, guys, because officially right now, there's still not the Battlefield setting in here since the game releases today. So therefore, what you're going to do is just simply leave it on a Global Driver Profile, go and import, and then import my Stripes NVIDIA Profile, just like that. And now you already have the best NVIDIA settings applied for basically all games and performance out there. Now, real quick as explanation, the NVIDIA Profile in Spector is basically accessing the same settings as the NVIDIA control panel just a lot more detail. That's why I like it so much. Second thing, there are a few things which I have to explain to you right now, which will just make sense. And you have to trust me there, I guess. In the first place, we fully force disable G-Sync as well as any sort of frame rate limitations. And now for the first part, let's talk about maximum pre-rendered frames and the ultra low latency mode, because there's so many misinformation about this on the internet. Whenever you play a game, you're not actually seeing the frames in real time. What actually happens is that you use the 3D applications usually, which means that your game is pre-rendering around three frames before the actual one which you see right now on your screen. And if you actually put this to something like one, you're reducing the amount of pre-rendered frames to something so low that you get a lot less latency because there's not multiple other frames pre-lined up. This is a great technique to basically force lower latency and less input delay in all games, but this is kind of an outdated way. This is from like DirectX 9, DirectX 11 days. So therefore what Nvidia actually brought in there is the ultra low latency mode. This setting overrides the maximum pre-rendered frames. So theoretically, you can put it on something like one, but what actually happens is that the NVIDIA Profile Inspector and the NVIDIA Control Panel is gonna choose these two options. If you use something like one as a setting, which is equivalent to ultra basically in the NVIDIA Low Latency CPL state, this is gonna be a lot more hardware demanding on your CPU because your CPU has to work a ton more to actually get these frames out as fast as possible. And the ultra low latency mode is even more hardware demanding. In order to actually be able to use this, you need to put ultra low latency mode enabled on on, then it's enabled, and then the CPL state is basically your control panel state. As I mentioned guys, the Nvidia Profile Inspector and Control Panel both share the same options. So therefore, if you put it in here on ultra, it's also gonna be on ultra in your control panel. And ultra as mentioned is the fastest. It's even faster than one frame. It's kind of like real time almost. We're getting as close as possible as we can get right now with tech. So therefore, ultra low latency is gonna give you a lot less input delay, but it's also a lot more hardware demanding. So if you are not running a very good PC, I would highly recommend you to actually turn this off. If you're maybe running something like a Ryzen 3 CPU or like an i5 from before the 10th generation, this is gonna cause a lot of FPS problems. If you are running a decent PC, you can try to put it on on. And if you're running a very good PC with let's say like i7, Ryzen 7 from like the last five years, you can definitely try to put this on ultra. But this is why it's so important that you actually live listen and understand what these settings do. Vertical sync should be forced off and off. I mean, it's self-explanatory. This only benefits 60 Hz panels if you have a lot of visual glitches. Now, next up for anti-aliasing, we have a very outdated method, which is FXAA, which is super old and basically nobody uses anymore in modern games, especially DirectX 12 titles. And what anti-aliasing basically does, it sharpens edges in the distance. So if you see a tree from a distance, let's say 100 meters in Battlefield, it might not be super sharp. You've seen this, where like lines jitter a little bit. So therefore, I left on the application control feature so that you can 
can still enable it in Battlefield if you want to, but something like FXAA is forced off. Only thing which you leave on is gamma correction, which is lightning. And something like transparency multi-sampling and transparency super sampling should be completely turned off. This is only for like a handful of items which are in most games so that they don't look as weird with transparent objects in it. If you have something like a fence in the distance and it look a little bit sharper, but who really cares about that? And now next up for texture filtering. A lot of people also don't understand this. Antistrophic filtering, optimization and sample optimization are two of the greatest features for textures. They basically help your game to load textures a lot faster, which is going to give you a decent FPS increase. But then on the other hand, we have something like antistrophic filtering itself, which I completely turned off because I don't care about how fancy textures look close up. There I would say it's even more important to maybe have better anti-aliasing than actual texture filtering, especially in games like Battlefield, which are like super fast paced. You anyways don't pay attention to that. Then the LOD bias, the level of detail is on allow because for Battlefield, you anyways don't change the level of detail. I haven't seen this so far. This is a thing for other games like Fortnite as an example, where you can actually make the game look like Minecraft or Roblox if you change that. Then the texture filtering quality of course on high performance and trillion optimization on on. And that way now guys you already have the best Nvidia Profile Inspector settings which you can straight up apply with one click and this is a one time tweak you're already good to go. Now for this next step we're gonna go into our Windows search bar and just simply type in that power until you can see choose or edit power plan. Once you're on that power options you can see right now that my system is set to balanced which is the worst you can have especially for games which are CPU intense. What you rather want to use is the ultimate performance mode. This one is made for higher end builds again. You also have additional mode which is called high performance which might be better for more mid tier PCs I would say but if you can the ultimate performance mode is the best setting you can choose usually. For some people out there it's maybe even still hidden so therefore I'm going to show you how to enable this. There is a comment in the video description and then just simply search up CMD, right click onto it and run it as administrator. Then we're going to click under yes and this window here is going to pop up. What you need to do is paste in the following comment, power CFG, duplicate scene and then we're going to press enter and you can see the ultimate performance mode is now enabled and once you go back into edit power plan you can then see under power options that you have the ultimate performance mode enabled don't question why i have multiple here guys for you it's going to be just one but yeah i've showed this step a couple of times already so therefore make sure that this one is always checked 